all my books are the um, benefits of ketones. Um, a lot of people think you need to do a ketogenic diet to make ketones. What say you? Well, you don't have to do a ketogenic diet to make ketones. Uh, you may want to do a ketogenic diet for a shorter period of time, as long as you go in and go out of ketosis. Chronic unending ketosis is not good for you. Um, there are a few people who get away with it, but generally speaking, you're going to want to have some carbohydrates because things like the glial cells in your brain, they're the maintainers of your brain. They actually like blood glucose. So people generally, if you go full ketosis or if you over fast, which is becoming a big problem now, I felt great when I intermittent fasted. Therefore, I'm going to do one meal a day fasting, which is a 24 hour, 24 hour fast. I'm going to do this every day. And what I found over 10 years of working with people doing this in the bulletproof lifestyle, women tend to hit a wall with fasting after about four to six weeks where their sleep quality goes down because they're just either not getting enough calories or they're just eating too infrequently. So first is sleep quality, then hormones get dysregulated. So the cycles change and then hair starts getting thin. And if you look at men, it usually takes them six to eight weeks to do it. And with men it's, oh, my sleep quality goes away. I wake up without the kickstand I normally have in the morning, and then I start getting thinner hair. And if you go all keto without a break, this can happen. And if you start over fasting. So I find that for people who have a reasonable weight to lose and haven't built a metabolic uh, flexibility like that, you don't need to go full keto. What you can do though, is you can use two of the three fasting hacks that raise ketones enough. This is enough to suppress hunger hormones and to show your cells that they can eat ketones as a fat source without having to go full on keto bro mode where I'm only eating you know, bacon for the rest of my life, which is not a good idea. And one of those is um, just black coffee. The amount of caffeine that is present in two small cups of coffee is going to actually make you um, double your ketone production, according to a study from UC uh, San Diego. And if you use MCT oil, MCT oil, at least the C8 form of MCT oil, is four times more ketogenic than coconut oil or the most abundant MCT oil. So coffee plus some MCT bumps your ketones up enough. It, they need to be at 0.5, which is a very low level. And at 0.5, ghrelin, the hunger hormone drops, and CCK, the fullness hormone goes up. And when that happens, it frees your mind. And I found the study that illustrates that. It turns out that about 15% of the thoughts in the average person's day are about what's for their next meal. And that's an average person. If you're obese, like I used to be, or your metabolism, metabolism isn't working, you might be looking at 30 or 40% of your thoughts are about tacos and donuts. Well, when you get your ketone levels up using MCT oil and using black coffee, well, your thoughts turn off and you get those thoughts back and it makes a really big difference. You know, I'm glad you brought up that the, you know, the going keto or doing a ketogenic diet 24 hours a day, seven days a week, months on end, uh, is probably really a bad idea. And you know, there's certainly no evolutionary evidence that we would have ever done that. Um, we do, you know, we are the fat ape for a very good reason, uh, because we can burn free fatty acids for most of our fuel needs, and the brain can't use a lot of free fatty acids because they can't get into the brain fast enough through the blood-brain barrier, and so we have a backup system of ketones. But Thank you for pointing it out. Even at full ketosis, even at full crazy three to five millimoles of ketones in your blood, your brain still has to have anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of its fuel as glucose. It really and does. It really does. And people say, oh no, your brain loves ketones and it is the preferred fuel. And I say, well, if that's the case, how come at full ketosis, your brain's still were using 30 to 40% glucose? And it, <laughs> it seems like it's because neurons are the, the rock star celebrity part of the brain and they will use ketones even if sugar is present. 
but the glial cells and the astrocytes and the support and maintenance system, the immune system of the brain, it is shown in studies to prefer glucose. So if you want rapid thinking, in fact, one of the reasons spiritual practices have fasting is ketones let your neurons work better so you can really have that energy and the focus to go deep, to go within, and that's why you feel really good when you intermittent fast. But if you only do that, then you are not maintaining the brain anymore. And this is why people who go keto, which I'm a fan of, do it, and then go out and go in and go out and go in and go out. And when you're at the weight you wanna be, you can have carbs, just have them with your evening meal. You'll sleep better as a result, your gut bacteria will be happier and don't eat toxic carbs. You know, Don't eat whole grains because they're actually just not healthy for you, as you well know. Yeah. Uh, so when you get it all dialed in like that, you end up realizing that, okay, I can have ketones. The other thing that always struck me as odd, when someone's really into this idea of keto, imagine um, imagine if someone came to you, Dr. Gundry, and said, you know, I wanted to have more energy, so I got my blood glucose up to 200. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> right? And you'd be like, uh, you're diabetic. Well, if someone has ketones of, of you know four or five or six for long periods of time, it's because the body is not using the ketones for energy. Otherwise, the blood levels wouldn't go up so high. So we don't have proof that high levels of ketones are beneficial. We have proof that metabolizing ketones is beneficial. And if they're present in the blood and you're not pulling them out quickly, your body isn't good at doing that. Intermittent fasting makes it so that you can better burn ketones and better burn glucose. When you can burn glucose properly, that means you're not diabetic. And when you can burn ketones properly, it means you have metabolic flexibility, which equals human resilience. And it's that, that balancing act that makes us younger, it makes us smarter, faster, happier, and it turns off the cravings. And it's turning off the cravings that's so critically important if you just wanna function during the day. Yeah, 